Hello and welcome to this proof review. Today we proved the extension theorem of Caratere Dori in six steps. So let's start with the first one. First, we want to show that sigma star is a sigma algebra. So basically, we have to show that the definition of a sigma algebra holds. First, the empty set is an element of sigma star. So first, we want to show that the, the empty set is an element of um, sigma star. And short reminder, um, this definition of sigma star. So we have this condition. And this is exactly what we're using now. So first of all, the complement of the empty set is, of course, the, the whole space, x. So now we choose some b in the power set of x. So this b. And now we show with that that the empty set is in this sigma star. And this is really not that hard because if you... If you see that, we get that. And now b is in the power set of x. So this is just b. And now my assertion is that this is 0. And this is really not hard to see. Um, you can see that if you choose a constant um, sequence of, of sets for that, or otherwise, um, mu star is an outer measure, so it is clear that this is zero. And then we have exactly what we wanted. And therefore, um, the empty set is an element of it. Second, sigma star is closed under complements. Next part. Now we want to show that um, if an z is in sigma star, then its complement is also in it. And this really easy to see because the way we defined this is a symmetric way and so keep in mind that this and this holds i also um, draw a picture if you don't believe me and yeah as i said due to the symmetry um, we're we're done here because there's nothing else to show because we have here the complement and here the set itself so this is really clear and we're done sigma star is closed under countable infinite unions the third step to show that sigma stars in sigma algebra is the by far the hardest step and we will have to work a, a bit so first we prove Let's say that a uh, finite structure, um, so we prove an intersection union stability in the finite case, and we need that for a cons construction for the um, infinite case. And this is also an yeah, usual technique to show something like that. First, you show the finite case. And then you build with it a construction for the infinite case. This is really unusual style. So for this, um, we take two sets in it, and then set of the of the power set of x. Um, then the following is true. Um, this intersection is the same as we would do this. And this this one is really clear because um, yeah we we have here this intersection here and we intersect it with with this and yeah then it's clear then that we have an um, that that we have this set in this set it is a part of it. And the other way around holds because um, this is in this set. And this is because you can write this as this. And now you see it because we have the union of this and this. And of course, this is a subset of it. So we have equality here. 
And I, yeah, also draw draw a picture here. So if you have A and B inside of Omega, then it's trivial. More interesting is the case when they overlapping, so they're not all inside Omega. So we have parts of it which are outside, but yeah, it's simply to say that um, the parts we don't need, we, we cut them off. So if we take a step into it, we, we're basically in this case again. Okay. And with a similar argument, you get that this also holds. This is really analog. And now we can transfer this to the, to the measure. Or better say, the outer measure. This is not a measure. Okay, so we put what we proved um, a few seconds ago into this outer measure. And then we get this side. This is really what we proved a few seconds ago. And of course, we are dealing here with the requirement in Sigma star. So this one. Yeah, and so, so it just holds. And similarly, similarly, we get this. So yeah, it's really almost the same argument. So we have those two identities now, okay? If this is too fast, you can stop the video and think about it, of course, or you can ask questions in the comments. So with those two identities, we now get that sigma star of omega is the sum. And if we add now this term to this equation, um, no, sorry, to this equation, then we get this equation. Yeah, so you add this here. And that's what we wanted. So now we have this set and this set. So this and the complement of it. And this is basically the requirement of sigma star. And therefore this intersection is in it. Using those identities, like in 1B, let's go to it. I mean this and this. We see that also the union is in it and the uh, difference also. Now we can assume without lo loss of um, generality that A and B are disjoint. Otherwise we will subtract just the intersection and we are in this case again. Um, it follows that um, this, and I have to say what this is, um, this means that we take the union of A and B in a disjoint way. So A and B are disjoint. That's basically what we assumed also in the beginning. Okay. Because if they are disjoint, you can subtract this term from it and it's the same, but just if they're disjoint, otherwise this would be wrong. And now we're using a trick many times. So you can split this term into this. And if you do that again and again, you're ending at this, okay? And now I assert that this is also true. 
And this is true by induction, yeah, because we proved here the base case, and then we can, yeah, we can assume that it holds for n, and then we show that it holds also for n plus one. Yeah, so this is a basic in induction. Now we let m be an arbitrary big but fixed um, value. Okay, so you can choose whatever m you want, but it has to be fixed then. Yeah, and what we get then is um, what we have here. Here. We add them with this term, and by the union stability, um, this is true. Yeah, you can also say it, instead of um, union stability, you can say that we're closed under unions, okay? And this is what we showed um, a few seconds ago. Yeah. Okay. So we're here, and this plus this term is what we wanted. It's um, mu star of omega. What we're doing now, because we're not in, um, we're not done, because we wanted um, that this holds for countable infinite unions and of course we, what we have to do is letting m go to infinity and that's fine by this inequality it works also and then we're done because now the other inequality is always true and we're done with this step and Therefore, we we'll show that sigma stars and sigma algebra. Step two, mu star coincides with mu on m. Okay, so now we want to show that for all um, sets in m, we have we have an equality in in this, but we have to only to show. Um, one inequality because so this one and the other one is true by definition so yeah to be exact you you have to choose a constant um, sequence of sets and then it's true by the definition of uh, new star so this inequality is true okay so we want to show this one, yeah? And just a reminder of how we defined mu star, and it's defined like that. And if you read that, you have a monotone increasing um, sequence of sets where A is in it, yeah? And we will use that in a moment and so keep that in mind. <laughs> um, mu is continuous from below. So this is equal to this. So this equality is uh, continuity from below. And now, of course, this is less or equal to this limit because here yeah, we intersect here with A. And yeah, now we have this limit, but have a look at the definition here. So, yeah, if you combine that with that, um, we chose the, the right a n ones, and so we're done here because of the definition of new star. We, we fulfilled that. 
step three, the generated sigma algebra is a subset of sigma star. Now we want to show that the generated sigma algebra by, by M, so this is a subset of, of sigma star. And here it is sufficient to show that M is a, subs is a subset of sigma star because in the first step we showed that sigma star is a sigma algebra. So if, if this holds, of course, this is also a subset of this because it's the smallest one. The so, smallest sigma algebra. Okay. Um, now we consider Bn in, in M with properties like those ans in mu star have so these properties right so take an a and m and we get also that this is a subset of this by this and yeah, similarly, this is a subset of this. And therefore, we can put that into mu star, and we get that this is less or equal to the limit of, of that, yeah? Mm. This is a similar argument to what we had a few seconds ago. So you should have that in mind why it is sold. But you can think about it, and if you don't get it, you can ask that in the, in the comments. Yeah, and altogether we showed the assertion because um, if we add them up, we have this inequality, and that's exactly what we wanted. So now it is in a subset of it, of sigma star, and we're done here. Mu star restricted to sigma star is a measure and extends mu. And now we want to show that mu star restricted to sigma star is a measure and also it extends. And this is where the name of this theorem comes from. Um, mu. Okay. Um, and that this is an extension follows by step one and two. So we showed that there. And for the measure property, uh, we need to show that um, sigma additivity holds. And the sigma additivity holds um, by the continuity from below. So if you take um, a n, so a sequence of sets, which are pairwise disjoint in M, and you use the continuity from below, you, you're done then. So this wasn't too hard to prove. Let's move on. Step five, our extended measure space is complete. We show now that the space we constructed is also complete. And so we'll take the, the setting we, we had in the assertion. So this is really just what we had in the assertion. And we take a um, second set in X, or I call it L. Um, yeah. And now we show that n is in sigma star. So we have to show that for n, the property in um, mu star holds. Okay. First, this is by definition, um, because it's an outer measure, um, bigger than zero or equal. And it's less or equal to this. Also because it's an outer measure. 
and this is the same as this we showed that and yeah that's zero by assumption where is it there is it. so we have here zero and here zero so this has to be zero also okay and now this is less or equal to this because we chose an omega in sigma star, okay? Okay, and this is less or equal to this. And we get that this has to be equal. There are a few calculation steps I moved out. If you have problems here, let me know that. And so we have that uh, because this is zero. So if we add them up together for for here, um, we have that uh, property of star and sigma star both so n is an element step six if mu is finite then the extension is unique okay finally we show now that if we have on finite mu um then its extension is unique and of course you can't expect an uniqueness if this isn't true. Um, I told you that also in the in the video before, um, in the Cartier-Dori video before. Um, if you take the counting measure, you can construct really strange uh, count examples. So this you can't expect that. Okay, so you can show that in uh, many ways. Um, the direct way is um, maybe more intuitive, but I think also a bit harder than the way we would choose in a few seconds. Because you, if you don't take too much care, you will run into um, undefined expressions like infinity minus infinity. And also you have... Um, if you make it really good and clear the proof you you will have some yeah double limits and i think the the way of contradiction you you might already know that so proofing uniqueness by a way of contradiction might be much more easier okay mm. so i assume now that we have another extension and we call it new we consider a subset of sigma star and now we cover A with a sequence of sets out of M. Yeah, be careful, be careful A is out of sigma star and those A ends are out of M. And this is okay and valid because we're dealing here with extensions. So this is okay. So also you can call this an extension cover of A, if you like to. Okay, so we take nu of A, and this is of course less or equal to this, because um, this is a cover of this. And now it is also less or equal to, to, this, to the sum of it by this um, sigma sub-additivity of outer meshes. And this is, of course, equal to this sum by step two. Um, yeah, because this is an extension of mu, and we show that this is equal to mu. And here it is really important that we took a ends out of m. Otherwise, we couldn't. Oops, we couldn't use step two here. Okay. 
and we can do the similar thing for, for the complement. And of course, this is an element of um, of sigma star 2, because we showed that this is a sigma algebra, so the complement is also in it. Okay, with, of course, we don't, uh, of course, again, um, B ends out of M. It is important, again, that we choose uh, sets out of M, and then we get this. Yeah, so it's very similar to this. Okay, so we have now that this holds and this holds, okay? By the definition of new star. And if we add that now, we get the whole um, measure. And of course, that they're the same here. And this is of course a contradiction. We we assume that it is another extension, but we show that they're the same. So this was false, and the extension is unique. And we're done with the proof of the extension theorem. Thank you for your attention.